For a Jedi Padawan, the Trials of Knighthood are some of the most important events during their Jedi training. They are the culmination of their efforts as young Jedi, and only those who are strong enough to endeavor these trials are deemed fit to be inducted formally into the Order as Jedi Knights. During the old days of the Jedi Order, when the age discriminatory rules of today's Jedi were much less imposed, the Jedi Council of Dantooine required prospective acolytes to pass three tests to prove themselves worthy of being considered a Jedi Padawan. The first test evaluated the acolyte's knowledge of the Jedi Code. Vital to a Jedi's training, the Code was reviewed repeatedly throughout an initiate's life during either meditation or class. The Jedi Code established a code of conduct intended to maintain the general behavior of all Jedi and was based upon the principles of self-discipline, tolerance, compassion, harmony, and peaceful exploration. These values were key and led to a refined Jedi Code as such. There is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There is no death, there is the Force. The second test consisted of lightsaber construction, using crystals either provided by the master or found during a separate trial by the initiate, him or herself. If you've watched the Clone Wars TV series, there is an episode called The Gathering from Season 5, in which Yoda, along with Ahsoka, leads six Jedi younglings into the crystal cave where they fulfill their rite of passage by constructing their own Jedi lightsabers. If you're interested in either the Trials of Jedi Initiates or more information on Kyber Crystals, the lightsaber's power source, I suggest you watch this episode. After the Rusan Reformation of the Jedi Order, this trial was altered to also test self-discipline. It required the Initiate to demonstrate competency either through meditation or lightsaber combat, although this test was based more upon technique than on skill. The final trial was by far the most important, and tested the connection that any one initiate had with the Force. This was usually done through the assignment of a task in which an initiate's conviction with the light side of the force would be tested and put to battle against their dark side. The redeemed Revan did this by locating and redeeming the fallen Cathar apprentice Juhani, who had fallen to the dark side after mistakenly believing she had killed her Jedi master. After completing these tasks, an initiate would follow one of three paths. The most desirable and most common was to be chosen by an existing knight or master and taught as a Padawan learner. Initiates who hoped to attract the attention of a potential master did so by participating in a lightsaber tournament, where they fought and demonstrated not only their skill with the lightsaber, but discipline, technique, and most importantly, their affinity with the Force. An initiate could also become a Padawan by being directly assigned by a master. This was the case for Ahsoka, who was assigned to Anakin by Yoda himself. Those who were not chosen were sent to the Jedi Service Corps or given a chance to leave the Order. But for those who advanced to the rank of Padawan, 
This was but the first step of their path to becoming Jedi. Trials were almost always a formal event, overseen by the High Council and the current Battlemaster. However, in the later days of the Order, trials could be bypassed at the discretion of the High Council if the Padawan had shown great skill, courage, or dedication to the Order. But this was a very rare occurrence, and only four known Jedi have been known to have not gone through formal testing. These four were Padawan Johan Athon, who was knighted by Master Valentin Farfalla for courageous service to the Order even after the death of his master, General Hoth. Number two, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was knighted after defeating Darth Maul in combat and suffering the loss of his master, Qui-Gon Jinn. Number three was Anakin Skywalker, who was knighted after going through several trials during the Clone Wars. And last, Luke Skywalker, who knighted himself after the death of the last living Jedi Master, Yoda. Ahsoka would have been the fifth Jedi, as Master Windu had named her efforts to prove her own innocence as her great trial. But she left the Order before she was knighted. Chosen One, Jedi, Master Pilot, the husband and lover of Padme, Dark Lord of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker was the epitome of success for the Jedi, and was all of these, but at the same time, none of these, as deep inside, he was but a man, as susceptible to grief and loss as those who depended on him. Anakin's trial of skill was completed when he defeated Asajj Ventress on Yavin 4 during the Clone Wars. His trial of courage was foregone, the Council deeming his bravery throughout the Clone Wars as sufficient enough. And his trial of flesh was completed when he lost his arm to Count Dooku on Geonosis. Although it was an act of recklessness, Obi-Wan convinced the Jedi Council to accept it. This was but the start of Anakin's trials. On Nelvan, Anakin was forced to encounter the darkness within himself. On a mission, Skywalker fell into a deep meditation and saw himself as Darth Vader. He saw himself and the monster that he would eventually become. The Chosen One, Bane of the Jedi, the Balance of the Force. He saw himself to be both the betrayer and the betrayed, the culprit and the victim, the hero and the villain, the Jedi and the Sith. Having gone through this trial, Anakin was acknowledged by the High Council as having indeed passed the test of spirit. And although he was knighted, Anakin was denied the rank of Jedi Master as he lacked the one essential trait that all Jedi Masters possessed. Wisdom. Impulsive, emotional, and headstrong, Anakin was deemed not to deserve the rank of Jedi Master. And Anakin turned to the dark side and named Darth Vader went on to destroy the order that he had fought for his entire life. Many years into the future, Vader would 
moved by his son's love, abandoned the dark side and sacrificed himself to destroy the emperor. By doing so, Vader would fulfill the prophecy of the Chosen One, ending the rule of two, and acquiring the wisdom necessary to make peace with the sun and become one with the Force. After the Great Purge disbanded the Jedi Order in 19 BBY, the trials came to an halt. Their memory lived on only through the surviving members of the Order. When Luke sought out Yoda on the planet of Dagobah, Yoda instructed Luke in the ways of the Old Order. And after the New Republic was formed, Luke, using the knowledge that Yoda had gave him, along with the surviving Jedi holocrons, re-establish the order and its traditions. The trials would once again come to a halt during the Yujon Vong War. Jedi who survived this vicious undertaking were allowed to forgo any formal trials and were automatically dubbed Knights of the Order. After this war, the new order was finally given room to breathe and was once more able to hold formal trials. A deeply rooted tradition of the Jedi, the Jedi Trials of Knighthood would endure the Great Purge, the Empire, and even the Yuuzhan Vong. Their reputation and their legacy are indisputably some of the most influential factors in shaping the Jedi Order's values and beliefs, both in the present and for generations to come. This was Sith Rain, and thank you for watching. Until then.